ีนะฮะเ
it started as zero then that's zero in the room but when it's assembled a call to say start is at reference from e not from zero so anyway so I looked in the uh, disassembly and uh, I saw it did something that uh, the, co um, the kernel usually does when it starts up. It disables interrupts, it uh, clears something, I don't remember, <laughs> and it sets up the uh, zero page. Uh, I think it's the I.O. of the zero page. So it has to do, does do with banking, I think. Then I load the character set, the upper and uh, lower, no, the least significant and uh, most significant of the font, the least significant byte of that address where the font is in memory. So it's E something. And uh, then the high bit, and it does the same for the next pointer, where the, so that will be the destination. And then we go into the loop. So the loop is where it actually is copied. So, and you can also notice here I had plus one to get the um, second byte of the pointer. But in here you don't have to do that. And the reason for that is, um, is that uh, this, when you put parentheses around it, it's an indexed indirect access. So the index is here. So you load the index with zero and then it increments. So it goes from zero to FF and then it wraps around. And when it wraps around, uh, then it's no longer not equal and it will continue to increase um, the high byte. So you go, go to the next place. Though. But it's uh, hard to explain maybe. It's a 60 point value, these uh, pointers, because memory accesses are 16 bit. I'm totally new to this. I'm sure many of my viewers, maybe they don't want to see this at all <laughs> because they are a lot more uh, more experienced with coding than I am. So this is load A accumulator. And you can see you have something called indirect Y. And so that is something you use on the zero page to so you put your uh, pointer inside the zero page and then you access the data using that pointer and that pointer will point to somewhere else in the memory. So, so here you go. Enough about that. Uh, let's go back to the code. And uh, clear time of day. There's nothing interesting there. So what I'm doing here, I'm just writing to the memory area, which is uh, 0400 in um, Ultimax mode anyway. I also load spacebar into I don't know why I load spacebar anyway I load a color value into the color address and here's the value I was talking about so this is uh, for video matrix at 400 and this is for video character set at 800 then I set the time latches to FF such that when they wrap around they will start at FF and then I start the timer this is start timer and this is load timer and then I have my loop and then I wait for a new screen for every loop here and I at currently I only have one test program so I just want to say it was really hard just to get these numbers on the screen so let me show you how I debugged it that's uh, much more interesting I think so so when you start the device thingy then you can start the monitor. So the first thing I checked was uh, at the program that I'm running is starting at E. So I checked E. All right, I can see the program. And this is uh, the char, char set, I think, or down here. And then at the end of the room, which is FF something, there you go. You can see we get some uh, start vectors, which is uh, E. There you go. So this is FF4. So this is the last one. So that's 
OOE0. So it starts at E0. Uh, if you do a reset, and interrupts ha have some different values. So the other thing I was looking at was, did I really copy anything to memory? So if I continue with a monitor here, it goes to 0, 0, 0. And then I saw that at 400, which is down here, I saw that I actually got some text into memory. That was good. Um, but I didn't see it to begin with, so I had to change the code. And here you can see the font. This is the font. You can actually recognize that same pattern if I show you OE, -E -O -O. again, where my actual font is. So you can see the same pattern. This is tilde B N N B B N N B as you can see. So so this is is in uh, the room which is uh, connected to the Commodore in the emulator anyway. And up here you can see it, how it is in memory after it's been copied. So I knew that that was working, but I had the wrong uh, media matrix address. And the wick was configured incorrectly. So. So yeah, so and another thing I did to um, to check my code, I, I inserted breakpoints. So you can say, for example, O E O six, so it breaks at the very start. E zero zero six. That was what we saw in the vector. So okay, you can see. There you go. So now if I reset the machine, you can see it starts here. So now we can single step it. Now it's actually running my code. So that can be useful if you want to see that it's actually doing the right thing. So you can also change values. For example, if I do DO18, which is the uh, register for where the wiki is going to find the char set and the text. So if I now write 00, zero and then return, you can see that the text is no longer the same so uh, we can change it to one two there you go it's back and then if we change it to say two two which doesn't make sense anyway you can see that it prints it or it uses a pointer to the charge set with with the own with its own charge set. So that doesn't work. So I got tired of entering all these commands over and over again, so I made a batch file. And then I got tired of this batch file, so I made a macro. But I'm not going to go through that because it's very boring. But however, alt set and then it compiles and runs. So I'll just show you quickly so you can freeze frame. So basically what you need to do, you need one batch file like this. And it's very cryptic. Then you need then you need to set extra actual macro so macro and down there you have kickass and the name of this becomes important because you have to load a file inside the directory of notepad which is called short circuits and for some reason you have to open in it notepad plus plus and uh, as you can see it's not very friendly file but now you can find that kickass uh, variable and then what you do is that you point the script to that uh, script you just made so so you get it launched so now that i'm in my program now i can just hit alt set and it compiles it builds if you want so it builds uh, it, it converts the cart it uh, then shows the information in the cart and then it runs the emulator 
Jag kostar med på det kulposten du så tar jag lite YouTube. Så so, to cut the story short, we had this guy running, and then I have done a lot of coding here. So what I want to do is something like this. So test number one, just check the initial values before we set anything. So they should be FF all the time and print the color. So I can show you if it's not what I expect it to be. Here you can see we test it. So I start with red color, so assume it's wrong. And uh, if it's wrong, it will just skip to print out. And if it's not wrong, it will set it to green at the end. So let's say we expect FE here. There you see, then the second value will be red. So yes, I got the program working. Now it's in the machine and it's running from the FPGA and we can see timer A and timer B. So you see that timer B is incorrect and I was wondering why. When I used the real chip it was correct. All of them was FF including B. So the difference is that uh, I realized that I haven't actually in my FPGA VGDL program I have, uh, you can see down here, I have disabled timer B anyway. <laughs> so now, uh, funny enough, if you I press reset on this one, you can see it goes away because the program in the FPJ has now is not in there. So if I now program it, it goes to zero zero, and then if I press reset, we get uh, initialization. It goes to FF. So that's it.